much Divya and good afternoon to Jeff as well. Um, I just noticed Sally Varnum just popped in and she's definitely no strange to us all. I think she's even downstairs on campus. I'm upstairs Sally if you want to get coffee after. Um, but good afternoon everyone um, and thank you so much for the opportunity to present um, at this year's Student Voice Australia um, Symposium. So what I'm going to do I'll quickly share my screen first. Can someone give me a thumbs up if you can see that? Oh, good. Fantastic, awesome. Well, um, today's presentation will focus on enacting the Student Partnership Agreement. Um, it's really an exciting time at UCS. Uh, we recently signed our first Student Partnership Agreement. And the purpose of today's presentation is to give you a bit of an overview of what we signed, but also how you can potentially enact a similar Student Partnership Agreement at your institution. It's proven in the last three months to be a really helpful document for student leaders to progress particular student initiatives, um, and go forward and work on key priorities that we want to work on over the next two years. So before I kick off, in the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, upon whose ancestral lands our current university stands. Um, and I would also like to extend this acknowledgement to the many lands from which you are joining from virtually today, right across Australia, as well as New Zealand. I would also like to pay my respects to the elders, both past, present and emerging, acknowledging them as the traditional custodians of knowledge for these places. So today's presentation will be fairly um, simple. We'll go through a very quick introduction of what the UCS Student Partnership Agreement is about. I'll then touch on the development of the agreement, which will be the main focus of today's um, session, looking at how we managed to develop it over seven months, working alongside student leaders um, across our academic board, our student union, but also what we have Activate UCS, which is our on-campus service provider, which I'm sure many of your universities would also have um, that essentially manages all the clubs and societies, as well as on-campus um, venues, such as bars, cafes, and function centers. And lastly, I'll touch on the challenges and observations. Throughout the seven month development process, um, there were many challenges and observations, which I found quite interesting uh, while we were enacting the student partnership agreement. So first off, I'll touch on a bit about introduction. Um, in the, it's all about inclusive governance. Um, the photo on the screen you see is our former Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Sheryl Alexander, who worked very closely um, with student leaders in the development of this agreement. And she recently retired from UCS after 30 years, but she's also a very strong advocate across the higher education sector um, in working with students as partners, particularly um, championing student voice in governance and decision-making. So first off, um, what is actually the Student Partnership Agreement? Now, it can be separated into three prongs. Um, the first is that it is essentially a collective approach between student leaders and senior staff, outlining how we want to approach student engagement at UCS over the next two years. And the second fold is a um, compilation of key priorities for the next two years, which is essentially 13 collaborative priorities that we've agreed on that we're going to work on over the next two years, no matter who the student leaders elected at that time are. So we identified what issues are facing students right now and key issues that we see will come up in the next two years and a commitment from the university that no matter who was elected into those roles, um, because students come and go, some degrees are three, four, five years and elected reps are not employees. So they're not really at universities for all that long. But essentially we want to ensure there is that um, record or handover rather, um, that the issues we identify now will be worked on over the next two years. And thirdly, because the document is signed in 2022, we want to ensure it is relevant in let's say 2032. So every two years, a document will be reviewed by the Student Council Liaison Group. And for a bit of context, the SOG is a committee of our university council. Um, depending on your institution, you may have a Senate, a council, um, or a board and essentially it uh, reports directly to the VC and the Chancellor and all the student leaders convene at this committee between Academic Board, Activate UCS and the Student Union SRC all sit on this committee um, and can work on um, reviewing this agreement which is what um, occurred in the development phase. We all came together and worked on its development. Now the actual purpose of it and I will flag that this is very UCS specific um, I'm very mindful that student partnership agreements will vary across institutions um, and apply um, on different issues 
based on the values and the different areas you want to work on within your own institution. But essentially, our agreement supports our long-term vision at the university, um, as long as it's vision and values to promote an understanding between our elected student leaders and the university's broader range of activities that will impact the entire UCS community. We focus on two strategic initiatives of that strategy and essentially worked on that and expanded on how do we actually work together and how do we actually ensure a lifetime of learning to shape our learning experience at the university. But what I would say applies to each of your institutions would be the content in the blue box. Um, the agreement essentially uh, commits to three key things. It commits to a meaningful dialogue with the students in line with existing policy. It commits to recognising the role that student leaders actually play um, and the importance of seeing students as genuine partners. I think that point is really important. Quite often we have elected student leaders and quite often um, it might just be filling a governance requirement, but how do we actually genuinely engage our students as partners? It could be approaching students to get advice during the initial development of a policy, during the initial um, consultation phase of a new project, during the phase of introducing a new degree or making a new decision. Students should be at the decision-making table um, and to be seen as genuine partners, it's also mutually, um, it's also mutual in the sense that student leaders also have to be willing to work with the university. So seeing students as genuine partners was a key point in the agreement. And thirdly, it's a support engagement with our students during our time at university. Um, across our institutions, we need to continue to engage our students along the way. Um, students might be elected for one year, two years, but we need to engage them throughout the whole process to ensure we're working together along the whole time that student is in a role. So these are three things that the agreement essentially commits to. Um, it's a renewed commitment, but it's also a new commitment on the part of the university to send a very strong message to over 50 elected student leaders that we have across the university. Now, I'll focus a bit on inclusive governance. Um, inclusive governance is applicable across all our institutions. Essentially, we want a relationship between students and staff that can actually realise the bigger picture of the university. Uh, we recognise that partnership is a really important aspect of working together. And the Student Partnership Agreement helps us become effective contributors within our community at university. Uh, by partnering with students, the university now recognises that we can shape the broad picture of the university and our everyday experience. Um, and when I mentioned that there are 13 collaborative priorities, these 13 collaborative priorities are actually grouped under key themes. And those five key themes that we've identified is student participation, inclusion, sustainability, quality management, and communication. I'll elaborate on those a little bit later, but for now, as you might be aware, Sally Barnum um, was really the creator of Student Voice, this very organisation that has helped so many institutions um, expand, enrich and further student voice across 26 institutions across the country. And she says essentially that a student partnership agreement should not be considered transactional in nature. Rather, it should actually be focused on working together, working together on common goals aimed at enhancement across institution. It should provide a tool for collaboration on decision making and governance, institutional strategy and direction. I think it's really important to note that the SBA isn't a transaction between student leaders and the senior executive. Um, it's not saying you must do this and, you and we must do this, um, but rather it sets out a mutual and beneficial um, set of goals, a set of vision and values that we want to actually achieve together. And it's actually a tool for great collaboration. Um, I'll expand on this a little bit later, but when I say that this agreement was signed almost three months ago, Work has already progressed. Um, we agreed on something like improving how we deliver subject content and how do we ensure our subjects are engaging. And that comes through training tutors, incoming tutors that are new to UCS. And the very department responsible for that has already reached out to student leaders um, to meet with us and say, how do we work on this now? Um, and how would you like to inform our strategies in the training of new casual tutors at the university? So things like that are progressing and I'll expand on that a little bit shortly. I will now focus on the development of the agreement. As I mentioned, 
the agreement took seven months um, between uh, December 2021 and about um, June to July this year. And it took a lot of work. Um, it took a lot of work and energy of student leaders and the commitment and passion that each and every one of us has to enhancing the university um, overall. And the picture on the screen there is essentially the student council liaison group that I talked about earlier, um, where we convene um, across all the senior student leaders who each represent a key part of the university in one room um, every few months or so. And that's directly with the deputy vice chancellor and various other executives at the university as well. It's really a forum, a very informal forum um, for us to air out any issues, raise concerns, but also discuss topical things like strategy, policy, and what things are coming up um, at the university that we should be aware about. So touching on the development, um, it's only one slide, but essentially it's all here. Um, it took seven months and I won't go through all of it um, for the purposes in the interest of time, but it really started in October. Um, Real work didn't start till December, but about this time last year, about a year ago, um, there was just some preliminary ideas. Um, a preliminary idea of this saying that um, four other universities across the country have an SBA. We thought about how do we enhance the working relationship that we have with the university? How do we train up our student leaders to ensure that a good cohort of student leaders isn't lost by a new team? How to ensure a smooth transition with student leaders? So then we consulted Student Voice, um, so these four organisations, speaking with Piper um, and many other people involved with Student Voice, including Sally, um, on how do we start? Um, and we also consulted the Australian National University. So the ANU um, were the first university to sign an SBA. Um, so we've consulted with them and then work started. Um, we proposed and submitted a proposal um, to our Deputy Vice Chancellor and one of our directors at the university. Um, and over the summer break, it was sort of, you know, mulled over, considered. And when the new year rolled around in January and things started rolling back, um, the project was endorsed um, and work commenced in January. So then a working group was then established um, between student leaders, key student leaders. Um, so I myself represented academic board. Uh, we had our student union um, executive um, as well as our Activate UCS executives as well. And overall, we worked together over February to begin some skeleton drafting. We tossed some ideas around um, and then finally wrote something more substantial. And by February, um, the governance support team of the university, so the very team um, that's responsible for every policy and every um, big governance change that the university makes um, actually provided us with a number of staff to advise and review the project. Um, and ultimately the project was then formalized at SCLG, which is that committee of the University Council. And then it was referred to various parts of the university for their information. So for example, referring up to UCS Council, the Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, and all the council members were made aware referring it to academic board, all 60 board members on there, including all the deans, deputy vice chancellors, and all the senior staff, I mean, 60 board members were essentially aware. And then referring to faculty boards, every faculty in the university um, was made aware of the project as well. So then April um, work started to ramp up a lot more. Um, we started refining the agreement. The marketing team at the university released mar marketing material, um, and it was announced publicly. Um, externally to the university as well. And then by May, um, some final reviews were taking place um, by the university secretary and the final copy of the agreement was endorsed by the various parties to the agreement. And then by June, it was signed. Um, and then in July, some further media was released and it was finalized. If this development project, sorry, this development timeline went on in the last two months, it would be probably discussing the work progress so far, but I'll talk about that. Um, coming up shortly in the impact stage. Now I'd like to touch on the collaborative priorities. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of them because it is quite a lot and in the interest of time, I'll only focus on four. But essentially, as I mentioned, the 13 priorities fall under five key categories. And for student participation, I'd like to focus on engagement with the SVA. Um, all of us here are joining this symposium because of the work of the SVA. Um, and the different resources they provide us with um, in order to work within our institutions to enhance student voice. So I'm not sure 
um, you know, are we, you know, student leaders? Are we just spectators today who are joining this session? But essentially SVA appoints, um, sorry, if you're a member of SVA, the institution that you represent uh, has essentially one member. And that member is essentially the contact point between the university and the, the organization. And we essentially want to bolster that engagement by ensuring that we appoint one key student leader to SVA AG to be able to deliver um, insights about what we're doing at the university while engaging with a fantastic network of 26 universities and different student leaders to hear what they're doing at their institution and how do we bring that back to our university as well. Um, so that's one of the key collaborative priorities to make sure that going forward the next two years, um, given I currently represent UCS at the SVA, to make sure that next year and the year after, someone's going to be there because I will probably be graduated by then. The second is inclusion. Interestingly enough, um, I'm sure those of us um, early this year would have seen that the National Student Safety Survey results were released. Um, and this is a survey done across many universities to look at the prevalence of sexual assault and harassment on campus. Um, and in response to those findings, the university has taken the view that while we are below the national average uh, when it comes to cases of sexual assault and harassment on campus, it is still unacceptably high. And one of the key ways um, in addressing that in our response is to work with student leaders, work with the everyday student that has insight on how do clubs and society events run, um, you know, what messaging and what approaches of messaging work best in the engagement of students. So one of the key collaborative priorities is work with student leaders on our response to the NSSS surveys over the next two years. The university is doing a lot of work in the past months and they're constantly engaging our elected leaders across the student union, across Activate UCS, as well as those on academic board when it comes to advising on policy and looking at how we respond going forward. The fourth one is quality management. So in quality management, you see that I highlighted um, recognizing the role of the student association, which is essentially our student union, engaging in activism on campus as a student union, including campaigns and demonstrations. Um, we all come from different institutions joining this session today, um, but inherently we recognize the role of student union has an activist component to it. And we wanted recognition from the university that where the student union is an independent organization and they have a right to hold demonstrations on campus, including campaigns about important causes and issues that are really important. And we want that recognition. We don't want it to seem that the student union um, is going against policy and they're just holding demonstrations on campus because it is within line of policy. Um, we do have a campus policy that states that demonstrations are allowed on campus subject to some regulations, but we wanted a commitment on the part of the senior executive and the university to recognize that the student union can partake in activism on campus, and this is allowed. And this is something that's now included in the agreement. So that was a huge win for us um, and for the student union in particular. Now, the fourth and last one is under communication, um, where I mentioned strengthening communication or relationship between student leaders and senior staff with the incoming and outgoing student leaders. At the moment, we're just finalizing our most recent student elections. Um, I'm aware that um, a new student rep in my position will be coming in very soon um, and across many other um, across many other positions as well. And while I will still be at university next year, um, I want to ensure that student leaders have that strong communication with staff um, and that institutional knowledge and relationship building that I've been able to get the last few years to be passed on to that incoming rep. Um, and that will allow us to have that seamless handover that transition of institutional knowledge, that exchange of different relationships we have to ensure that student can get the most out of their term while being in that position. So these are the certain collaborative priorities. I'm mindful that it is quite a lot. So I'll be sending more information in the chat after for your um, reference that you can have a look at the full copy of the agreement as well. But for us to move on, I will now talk a little bit about the challenges and observations. As I said, it was a big seven month project um, and all the student leaders you see on your screen right now uh, were involved in the development of it. Um, and it took a lot of time. It took a lot of time, energy, but at the same time, um, there were disagreements. Um, it was by no means perfect. And I think 
um, it, you need to have robust debate. Um, you need to have good and robust negotiations to ensure that we achieve the best outcome possible in this agreement. So these were some challenges and observations that I found while we did the agreement. So firstly, collaboration. Um, as I mentioned, UCS provided um, a set of governance and policy staff to work closely with student leaders throughout the whole process, from drafting to advice, to reviewing, to editing, to even formatting the agreement to be a very nice UCS branded document. They provided us with a pillar of support. Um, initially with a lot of student projects, um, you sort of think, is it gonna be student led? Are we gonna get the resources? Are we gonna get the help? But on this occasion, um, you know, we received so much help um, to bring this agreement through um, over the line. The second is negotiation. As I mentioned, the agreement itself required a really high level of negotiation between student leaders ourselves, as well as with a senior executive. So even within the student leadership team, um, we had our own differences. Um, you had a student union who wanted um, key things. You had Activate UCS, which is a different organization who wanted key things. And you had academic board and other student leaders across the university who wanted different things. So you had to negotiate amongst a big team of student leaders. Um, and we navigated that very diplomatically, very professionally um, in order to achieve the best outcome. But that also meant that we had to negotiate with the senior executive. For example, the inclusion of the clause that recognizes the role of student union was something that um, we had to negotiate and talk about um, because at a time where um, there are many concerns and issues facing our broader student community, including our staff. Um, it was important for us to navigate that and work through that with the senior executives to ensure that it is something we wanted to include, uh, but also in such a way that they can also agree to it. So it required a really high level negotiation, which I was quite um, interested in observing during the whole process. Thirdly, it's acknowledgement. Um, the agreement really acknowledged the recognition um, of the role of student leaders and the various bodies we represent, from the student union to the organization that runs the campuses, clubs, societies, bars and cafes. Um, but also, as I mentioned earlier, the really specific reference to the role of the student union in acknowledging that they are allowed to partake in activism and demonstrations on campus, which was really an, an important um, and a big achievement for our student association and the whole team on the SRC as well. Fourth, um, student voice. Um, so this very organization um, recognize um, that student leaders play um, a big role outside the university. The fact that I'm being able to you know, talk to all of you today in this session is an acknowledgement by the university that we should be supporting um, key organizations such as SVA that brings together over 26 universities and so many student leaders who are passionate about this area to engage in dialogue, um, to um, discuss issues with other student leaders, but also be inspired by the ideas and thoughtfulness that they have at their universities and how we bring it back to our university as well. So engagement with key bodies such as SVA brings our university closer um, to others in the enhancement of student voice and approaches of governance across the country. And lastly, um, I was quite interested in media. Um, so the university released quite a lot of media, um, both internally across all the different departments, faculties, and the different bodies to publicize a project, but also externally with some articles as well um, to bolster engagement. And overall, this meant that we saw higher engagement with staff. We saw higher engagement with students internally. We saw a, you know, a mood of excitement in the lead up to the signing of the agreement. But we also saw other universities discussing the impact, um, both positive and negative, um, about the SBA. And I'll elaborate on that in the um, following slide. But when it came to the agreement, um, no agreement will ever be um, you know, 100% happy. Everyone's gonna be happy with it. There's always gonna be positives and negatives, which I think is really important to ensure that we have a robust and critical process um, that we ensure that we come to a conclusion that most people benefit from this agreement. And those observations were found um, in the impacts going forward. Firstly, um, post signing the agreement, so UCS is located in New South Wales. We're the first New South Wales University to sign an SBA. We're the fifth in the country. And student leaders across our neighboring universities over at the University of Sydney and the University of New South Wales have also begun discussing ideas for an SBA at their university. Both students and staff um, found that there were benefits to it 
had used yes, and they're carrying it forward now with their new leadership teams as well. Um, external opportunities. Um, so most recently, um, I did present at the HES for Higher Education session on student voice of partnership to universities in Australia and New Zealand. I'm talking about our, our SBA, but also um, the benefits for, for staff to also approach their student leaders to start that discussion. Um, this very symposium um, that I'm presenting to you today, um, as well as the Australian and New Zealand Law Association conference coming up this Thursday, um, which will be hosted in Sydney, um, and I'll be attending with Sally Barnum to also discuss a bit about the work of the SBA um, and the importance of it. Over at the National Union of Students Education Conference back in July, um, the SBA was discussed widely um, and other Australian universities expressed keen interest in learning more about developing their own version. As I mentioned, um, no agreement is going to be 100% um, positive and everyone's going to be happy with it. I think we need to respect that um, there must be um, differences and a robust debate to ensure we can critically look at the agreement um, and see whether, thing, whether parts could be improved. So when it came to the development of the agreement, it was really important that we allowed space for that. And we saw that, for example, at the NUS conference, um, where both sides came out and discussed different viewpoints, um, which really formed the future outlook of what we're going to change, what we're going to keep within the future agreement when it comes to a time to review. And other universities, um, other universities in Australia and New Zealand have actually progressed on the SBA. Um, speaking with Sally earlier this week, um, the University of Wellington over in New Zealand also finalised an SBA, and I'm sure they definitely guarded um, the resources that SBA provides um, as an organisation. And lastly, internally within UTS, um, as of September this month, um, two to three months of work has already evolved uh, with key areas within the university taking forward taking forward various collaborative priorities that we've agreed on and reporting back on how are we working on it? Who are we approaching? How are we going to fit this within the timeline of work? Whether it's responses to the National Student Safety Survey on sexual assault and harassment on campus, all the way to ensuring that our tutors are um, adopting inclusive and engaging practices in their classes. Um, all these sort of things inform us taking this agreement forward. Um, and a review will be undertaken every three months while work progresses um, to ensure student leaders of the day, given our elections most recently are over, that future student leaders coming in next year can also be kept up to date on how key initiatives are being implemented or worked on based on the SBA as a really important reference point going forward. So that pretty much sums up the impacts um, of the SBA as we go forward post signing over the next two years. Um, it's a fantastic agreement. Um, it has enabled our institution to work on so many important issues. It's allowed student leaders to draw closer with our senior executive and staff, um, a more sort of um, cohesive and mutually collaborative relationship where we can all work together to enhance institution and be part of the important decisions um, that make up our experience and our journey at the university. So that sums up the Student Partnership Agreement at UCS and how you um, perhaps could consider enacting one at your various institutions. Um, and with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you for that amazing session, Kurt. Um, we have about two minutes to answer some questions. Um, so maybe some really quick ones. Feel free to pop some in the chat or speak out loud, whatever works. And just for those who might not have questions, I've sent all the links in the chat. You'll find various articles released by the university at different points in time, as well as a copy of the full agreement. Um, and if you'd like to get in touch, feel free to shoot me an email or message on LinkedIn. <laughs>